And now, last session before our lunch break is uh, John Mignotis of Abra Silver Resources, explorer down in Argentina. So we're flying 15 hours to the west now, and uh, they're also drilling a copper hole, which I'm really curious to hear more about. Maybe you brought some visuals. Did you bring some visuals? Because I know the yeah, assays are not out yet. On Lockway Peter, Fantastic. Sure. No, looking forward to that. And John, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, stage is yours. My pleasure. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being here. A special thank you, of course, to, to Willem, the entire commodity discovery team uh, for putting this excellent event together. I know there's lots of great companies presenting here, uh, so it's really an honor for, for Abra Silver uh, to be recognized. Uh, it's a testament to, to our exploration team, the success they've had at site over the last couple of years. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, to walking you through our story. Of course, there's going to be some forward-looking statements as part of the presentation here. Uh, so Abra Silver is an advanced stage silver and gold uh, exploration company. Our key project is called Diablilos. Uh, it's located in the Salta province of Argentina, which is a very mining-friendly province in Argentina. Um, it's a, the Diablilos project is about 80 square kilometers, um, and most of the drilling up until recently has been focused on one key deposit uh, that we call the Oculto deposit. And so at Oculto, uh, we were drilling there uh, for the past few years, had some very successful results, uh, and managed to grow the Oculto deposit quite significantly. Uh, we just updated our resource estimate there back in November, uh, and we're now sitting at over 50 million tons. Very good grades. This is open, pitable, close to surface, uh, and that's entirely in the measured and indicated category. So at Oculto alone, we're sitting with a resource of about 110 million ounces of silver, 1.3 million ounces of gold close to surface. Now, as we look forward, what's really exciting, uh, and I believe the reason why we're here, is uh, just a few hundred meters to the southwest of Oculto, we have a brand new discovery. Now, this is called the Jack Deposit. Uh, we announced the first hole there back in August of last year, so, so quite recently. Uh, and since then, uh, we've now announced dozens of very high-grade results. This is a primary silver uh, discovery here, which we'll talk about momentarily. But this is where our drilling is focused right now. Uh, we've announced some incredible high-grade results already from this jack zone, with a lot more in the pipeline to be announced in the very near future. Importantly, uh, we also have a very strong balance sheet. Uh, so currently, we have about $15 million in the bank. So that's sufficient uh, to carry our exploration program for the next 12 months and beyond. So fully funded for the foreseeable future to continue to drill here. Uh, we also have some very supportive shareholders. Of course, Commodity Discovery Fund uh, was there from the onset. So they recognize the potential here uh, very early on. Uh, so, so kudos to them. Uh, and then we also have Eric Sprott as our largest shareholder. He owns 12% of the company. <clears throat> as Kai was mentioning, uh, in addition to Diablilos, in, in, the, in the San Juan province of Argentina. We also have uh, an earlier stage project. Uh, this is a large copper porphyry that we're drilling. We actually just completed drilling a 1.3 kilometer deep hole testing this big copper porphyry system. Uh, and we should have results from that out within the next two months. And I'll talk about that momentarily as well. So potential for a large copper discovery in addition to, to what we already have going on at Diablilos. So just quickly looking at the, the macro backdrop, as we all know, I mean, uh, the commodity space is very, very cyclical, uh, and so timing is key, timing is very important. We think right now this is absolutely ideal timing for both gold and silver. Um, you know, from a macroeconomic perspective, there's lots of uncertainty out there, as we know, with rising geopolitical tensions globally. Um, you know, you have bank failures, historic moves recently in, in the yield curves. All of these bode very well, of course, for gold, which is a safe haven with, with a proven track record there, um, and especially for silver. Silver, of course, is also a monetary metal, just like gold is, uh, but also has significant industrial applications. And I believe the Silver Institute uh, just recently came out with, or just last week, uh, in fact, came out with their latest update, uh, and silver had over a 240 million ounce deficit in last year. So one of the largest deficits in, in recent times um, and so clearly, demand for silver is increasing, supply has been stagnant for years, and so that's why we're, we feel very, very fortunate to have this high-quality primary silver project that we're advancing 
towards production. Now looking at, of course, there's various ways, again, to, to play gold and silver. Um, you know, if you look historically, the best performer, uh, performing sort of vehicle has always been if you find uh, junior explorers with uh, discoveries. Uh, and so back in 2020 uh, is when myself and our, our team took over the company. So we're running another company called Athon Minerals. We merged the two together uh, and started running this company. Uh, this was in January 2020. Uh, we had a five cent share price, about a $10 million market cap. Uh, our chief geologist, Dave O'Connor, who's in the front row here, uh, he immediately recognized the potential of this asset, which is the reason why we merged. Uh, he started drilling, and right from the very first hole, had some incredible high-grade results. And this was, of course, at the main Oculto deposit. So at Oculto, he got some incredible results uh, on a consistent basis. And you can see, as silver uh, took off in 2020, uh, Abra was actually the best performing silver explorer on the TSX Venture. So we're up over 750% that year. Um, and again, a testament to, to the exploration success we had there. And just recently, again, as we've seen gold and silver hopefully bought him uh, back in November, uh, again, you can see with the ongoing success that we're having, not only at Oculto, uh, but now at this new Jack discovery and also potential uh, upside from our La Coipita project, you can see uh, again, the share price really starting to take off here, and, and we see a, a very bright future ahead for both gold and silver, uh, and for Abra in particular. Now, where our key project is based, uh, the Diablilos project, it's located right in the heart of the lithium triangle. So Salta uh, is a very pro-mining, uh, it's a very mining-friendly province in Argentina, northern Argentina. It's right in the middle of the lithium triangle. Um, and for those of you following lithium, I mean, you know very well, it's a very, very active space with lots of new lithium projects being explored and actually advanced into construction. So you can see there uh, our Diablilos project uh, within a 100 kilometer radius all around us, uh, there's four uh, lithium projects that are currently being built. So that's over $2 billion US of CapEx that's going on in the ground right now, right around our project. So of course that has tremendous benefits for us. Uh, there's a new solar plant that's being built to the north there. Uh, there's a, already a natural gas pipeline in place. Uh, there's discussions of a second one uh, being built there to supply power for, for all these uh, mining projects. Um, you know, and it's, it's already a paved highway uh, for most of the way from, from Salta uh, with you know, lots of infrastructure benefits as well. And so SALT is a proven mining jurisdiction. It's clearly attracting a lot of foreign capital, building projects, and we feel very confident in saying Diablilos will be the next uh, project to enter that construction decision uh, in the near future. Now, putting our key Oculto deposit sort of in perspective is, is quite hard. I mean, you say 50 million tons, but it, it's very hard to visualize that. I think this, uh, this graphic here uh, sort of do, does a good job. For those of you who have, have been to Toronto, uh, you know the, the CN Tower, of course, is over 420 meters high. Uh, that's sort of the dimension. So if you picture that, and then you picture the Oculto mineralized system, um, it's sort of similar uh, in height. Uh, so the, you know, this is close to surface. The open pit, the proposed pit, will go down to about 300 meters. Uh, from, from surface, uh, and so this is a large bulk mineable deposit. Um, again, I mean, we've grown this substantially in recent years, uh, and it now grades, you know, uh, over 50 million tons in the measured and indicated category with very good uh, open pitable grades in oxides. And just looking at the, the track record here, uh, so again, when we took over in 2020, uh, there was already a historic uh, estimate uh, that was calculated back in 2018. That was about 26 million tons here. Uh, so we had 80 million ounces of silver, 730,000 ounces of gold. You can see uh, the success that, that our exploration team had in, in a very short period of time uh, with uh, a, quite a modest exploration budget as well. So in two years, uh, we completed our phase one program. That was the, the 2021 pit that you saw there. Uh, and then we completed the, the subsequent year, uh, phase two drill program. Uh, in addition, both exploration phases cost us less than $10 million US. 
And we were able to add over 75 million ounces of silver equivalent in the ground. So a very, very cost-effective program here. We've always had two drill rigs at site. That continues to be the case today. Uh, and essentially, for every 12 cents that we fund our exploration team, they come back with an ounce of silver in the ground. So remarkable sort of low-cost exploration here uh, with, with excellent track record of unlocking value. Now, if you look at the uh, silver intercepts here on a global basis, uh, so this is similar. I have presented this. Um, um, there, theirs was only looking at silver. Our occulto deposit is actually essentially 50-50 mix between silver and gold. So occulto is 100% precious metals, but it's a 50-50 mix of silver and gold. So when you convert the gold into silver equivalent and you rank uh, the sort of silver equivalent intercepts uh, throughout the industry over the last two and a half years now, you can see uh, on a grade thickness basis, out of the 11 best results in the world, occulto had six of those. And so more than half of the best silver intercepts, uh, silver equivalent intercepts uh, in the world have come from occulto. And you can see uh, on a regular basis, hitting you know, well over 100 meter thicknesses here from surface at very, very good grades. So occulto has really grown. It's, we've added uh, a lot of value. Um, but again, what's really exciting us as we look forward uh, is this new Jack discovery. So you can see uh, Jack, let me see if I can get the pointer here. Uh, so just to the southwest of Oculto, we have this brand new zone. The way this was discovered is we ran some geophysics across our entire property, um, and we saw this big magnetic low anomaly, uh, which we didn't really understand why it was there. This is in an area, importantly, that it had zero drilling done historically. And so at Oculto, uh, over many years, there's been over 120,000 meters of drilling taking place. Not a single hole was drilled to the south, uh, to the south here. Um, and so we drilled one single hole, uh, announced that back in August, and you can see the results. Uh, so almost 90 meters of 350 grams of, of silver. And so Jack, unlike Oculto, is like 95% silver rich here with uh, just a little bit of gold. And so this is a high-grade primary silver discovery, close to surface, in oxides, uh, with incredible grades. So immediately after that one hole was drilled, we drilled four holes, uh, 50 meters, on either direction from that discovery hole. All four of those holes came back with excellent drill results. And so we were drilling at, at Oculto. We moved both rigs immediately away from Oculto, saying, look, Jack here uh, is looking pretty remarkable. Um, and we've been drilling here ever since. So both rigs have been drilling here since uh, sort of late last year. Uh, we've drilled over 80 holes to date. We've received back results from 40 of those, uh, with the other 40 still in the lab waiting to be announced. Remarkably, out of the 40 holes we've announced to date, all 40, every single one, hit silver mineralization. And this is in an area, again, that had zero historical drilling. And so we've been drilling here sort of on 25 to 50 meter centers along strike. We've now extended this for over 800 meters along strike, and it's still open. I mean, we still haven't missed based on the holes we've announced to date. Um, and so we, we announced an upsize to our drill program a few months ago. Our original expectation was to drill 15,000 meters here, define a resource. Of course, uh, as Jack remained open, we expanded that. So we're drilling now 22,000 meters. That's essentially about 80% complete at the moment. Uh, will be completed really by the end of next month. And then in September, we'll be announcing a resource estimate on this new Jack zone with a pre-feasibility study on the entire Diablos project by the, end of the, by the end of this year. So Jack uh, is really a game changer for us. Um, importantly as well, as you look at the topography here, uh, when you go out towards the northeast, you can see mineralization starts getting a bit deeper. And so Oculto uh, has a strip ratio of about three to one or three and a half to one. Uh, at Jack, this is all flat lying. So this is right in the valley and mineralization is 50 meters below surface. So this is located flat zone, low strip ratio, very high silver grades, will result in better silver recovery as we expect. So a lot of benefits here. And so Jack, again, is, is truly going to change the economics as we look forward. I mentioned we've announced 40 holes to date. I couldn't fit them all on one slide. Um, but yeah, uh, we've had some remarkable, remarkable successes. 
So dozens of very high grade holes you can see here. Uh, these are the grades, uh, hundreds of grams on a very consistent basis here. In fact, in some cases up to, to three kilos over very, very good thicknesses. And I guess, again, it's hard to sort of put these grades uh, into perspective. Um, but when you look at a culto, the cutoff grade there, because it's open pitable, close to surface in oxides, is 35 grams of silver. So 35 grams for silver and above is economic mineralization. Um, at a culto, the average grade is about 120 grams silver equivalent. We have a high grade zone, which grades over 200 grams silver equivalent. Um, but looking at the grades here, I mean, this is higher grade than the, the highest grade zone at Oculto so far on a very consistent basis. And so when you have cutoff grades of 35 grams and you're intersecting, you know, consistent grades, uh, sort of 10 times that uh, plus, um, you know, this is truly uh, uh, quite a remarkable discovery here with a lot of upside potential ahead of us. Again, trying to visualize sort of how big the jack zone is. Uh, it's open, a long strike, and so far we've extended this for already 800 meters, a long strike. So again, putting that CN Tower into perspective, uh, if you look at the, the Sky Dome, we're now called the Rogers Centre in Toronto, it's a baseball stadium. Uh, right now, jack is open for four baseball stadiums and still growing. And so this is a, a large scale, high grade discovery. And I think that's you know, what you look for typically uh, in the investment space. It's a very unique combination. It's you know, quite often you get a small high grade deposit, getting a large high grade deposit uh, is, is clearly much more beneficial. Uh, and that's what we think we have here at Jack uh, and still growing. Now switching gears, uh, just talking quickly about our Lacquay Pita project. Uh, this is a copper porphyry uh, in the San Juan province of Argentina. And so this is another very mining friendly province in Argentina. I'd say in Argentina, Salta uh, and San Juan are both seen as being sort of the premier mining jurisdictions. Uh, to the north of us, uh, there's lots of copper uh, exploration going on with Filo del Sol to the north, uh, Lundin Mining acquiring Jose Maria, uh, that mine uh, that will become a mine shortly as they're building that. And then to the south, Los Azules, of course, Rio Tinto has now invested in that. Uh, that's to the south of us. And so there's a number of billion ton porphyries all along this belt. Uh, back in 2020, we were able to consolidate a huge land package. So we consolidated 70,000 hectares uh, right in the heart of this, uh, this uh, copper porphyry belt here um, and had very little exploration done historically. And so we consolidated this on a very cheap basis uh, with an option agreement with, with two private individuals. Last year, we drilled the first two deep holes on this property. The second hole hit over 700 meters of mineralization. Uh, with, you know, over, uh, I guess it was 220 meters of just over 0.4% copper equivalent. So good grades. I mean, on average along this belt, 0.4 to 0.5% copper equivalent seems to be the, the grade there of some of these mega porphyries. Uh, so we were very encouraged by that second hole last year. And this year we just completed drilling uh, a 1.3 kilometer deep hole into what we believe could be the center of the system. And so this is a large porphyry target here. Diameter is about a kilometer across. Uh, and so very early stage, obviously higher risk here, um, but we could be drilling what we believe to be the next sort of major copper porphyry in this uh, advanced belt. So very, very excited about this. Uh, results should be announced, uh, should be received by us in about two months time. And of course, will be announced immediately uh, once we receive those. So that's really it. Um, you know, I think that's, that's it in a nutshell. We have a very, very busy year ahead. Uh, Diablos, of course, uh, is where we're focused. We've now expanded that drill program at Jack. Uh, we've been announcing drill results every three weeks on average, and we expect that uh, to continue to be the case. So a lot of news flow ahead of us here, announcements from the Jack zone as we get back these results from the lab and as we continue to drill. Uh, and then by September, we'll have a resource estimate on Jack. Uh, and then a pre-feasibility study by year end. Um, and then there's also a number of other new targets as well on Diablilos. So as we ran that geophysics, we saw that Mag low at Jack in an area that had previously had no drilling. 
Uh, we've also identified some other targets. So we'll be drilling those targets and hopefully we can continue to grow the Diablilos project here, um, going from just one main deposit a year ago to now two, uh, and hopefully we can find a few others uh, in this uh, location as well. So very exciting time for the company. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for everyone's attention and happy to take any questions. Fantastic, John, wonderful presentation. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, before we you know, pause for lunch here, do we have any questions for John and uh, Abra Silver? Perfect, I have a couple. Perfect. Uh, uh, how far along the trail program are you right now? You said 22,000 meters is yeah. underway. Where We've are you at right now? We drilled about 20,000 of those. And so by the end of May, we'll complete that drill program. Yeah. And that's why by September already, we'll, we expect to have a resource on this new jack zone. Fantastic, yeah, that's fairly quick. Uh, quick turnaround. I'm sure you're blogging and logging and all at the same time, so you know where to put the drills. Um, are you planning your drilling based on those results, or do you have that pre-planned already? Yeah, yeah. So we're we're planning the next set of holes as we receive the results uh, from from the latest batch. And so right now we've been drilling along strike. It's also open uh, along the width as well. And so we've drilled a couple holes to the south, a couple holes to the north, waiting to receive those. And then if those hit mineralization, then we'll continue to delineate sort of the next set of holes. Fantastic. I, I don't have to ask you about what the next stage is after the resource. I'm sure you're going to keep drilling. And then I saw PFS. PFS this year. And then, of course, a bankable feasibility study we expect by the end of 2024. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a rapid development path. Fantastic. John, thank you so much for joining us. We'll break for lunch and uh, we'll reconvene here at 1 o'clock. And we'll continue with another keynote by Warren Gilman, really looking forward to that. So see you all back here at one o'clock. Excellent. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you so much, John. Thank you.